Club. Today we're going to work on Cripple Creek. This piece is in G major, so let's start out by warming up with a G major scale. We're going to start on the open G string and play 0134 on the G and the D string. We'll go up to Do, fourth finger on the D string, G. We'll repeat it and come all the way back down. We're just going to do nice relaxed whole bows. So Join with me. Starting on open G, here we go. which in this case is fourth finger G, Do, open A, Re, first finger on A, Mi, and fourth finger, or second finger, Fa. And we'll come straight back down. So we'll be doing Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, and coming down. And in this case, we're going to take one of the rhythms from our piece. It's the rhythm of measure five, long, short, short. We're going to do long, short, short on every step of the key. Okay, here we go. Long, short, short, long, short, short. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> chance to practice that scale with the rhythm from our piece, go ahead and rewind the video and try again. Now that we've warmed up the notes of our piece, let's do a slow run through for control and accuracy and coordinating all the different actions that we need in this piece and to just get a lay of the land. What's in this piece? All right, here we go. So, ding. Two, one, two, ready, go. to practice and make sure that you actually play the rest. Okay, now we've done a slow run through of the whole piece. Let's break it down chunk by chunk and practice everything individually. After we've done that, we're gonna go back and put it all together and play it a little bit uh, closer to tempo. Okay, 
the very first thing I want to look at are those first two measures. We start out with almost like a call to dance, these open string double stop fifths. It sounds very rustic and it, sound, it should sound open and fun and inviting and kind of raucous too. It's like, all right, time for the party to begin. Let's all get up on the floor and dance, okay? So I have put together a whole separate um, page on my website with um, a walkthrough on how to practice these double stops. So if you don't feel like you quite have the grasp on these double stops yet, go back to that web page, which I'll link in the video, and go through the walkthrough. Practice locking into each of these double stops. Go through all those exercises that I put on that web page and wrote out very carefully for you to practice. Okay, for now we're just gonna um, practice actually playing through the double stops and just take a quick look at the technique we might need for that. But keep in mind, all that was covered quite in depth in that web page, so you can go back and practice that in a separate session. So the first thing I want you to do is to just practice whole bows, different lengths of bow, going back and forth, down, up, down, up, really smooth, stay connected to the string the whole time. You can do four bow strokes, six, eight, keep it even so you could get a uh, down, up bow pattern going, but each double stop requires a different angle from your arm, and it's also a different arm height and angle, a uh, different arm height, than when you're on an individual string. So just spend some time locked into two strings at a time, one double stop pair at a time, because uh, maybe you naturally can get the middle strings very easily. <laughs> have trouble on the top string. So spend a little more time wherever you're having some trouble locking in. Just nice relaxed hold bows. It's not always as easy as that. So just you have to make sure you lock in. You can feel both strings underneath your bow hairs. And you start pulling the bow. Try to maintain your angle and your arm height so that you stay locked in to both strings the whole time. You might have to adjust your pressure, you might have to adjust your speed, but let's practice doing some nice whole bows. We're just gonna start down, up, down, up. So we'll do four bow strokes on each pair of strings. And we'll just go from low to mid to high, mid, low, mid, high, mid, as far as the pairs. The low pair is your G and C string, mid pair is your G and D string, high pair is your D and A string. Okay? Something like down, up, down, up is what we're gonna try. Okay? Down, up, down, up, one, two, low pair. Just make it sound fun and open. You notice when we get those nice open strings, it has a really uh, deep sound on the low strings. It's got a really buzzy sound on the high strings. We want to kind of enjoy and accentuate the character of each of the pairs of double stops. Now, of course, if we go low, mid, high, mid as our pattern that we're repeating, we can flip that around. We can invert it. We can do high, mid, low, mid. And if you look at the first two measures of the piece, that's actually the pattern of the piece. High, high, mid, mid, low, low, mid. But let's just try it where we do two bow strokes. High, high, mid, mid, low, low, mid, mid. High, high, mid, mid, low, low, mid, mid. Through that pattern. So we've got down, up on each double stop pair of strings. Um, going high, mid, low, mid and repeating that for a while. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. 
high, high, mid, mid, low, low, mid, mid. This time we only did two bow strokes per double stop pair of strings, just like it shows up in the piece. And we were doing the high, mid, low, mid pattern that shows up in the piece. So I don't always start with the exact pattern as it shows up in the piece. I oftentimes do, but sometimes I will kind of go to one step before that. I'll just take a low, mid, high approach. It's a pretty natural thing to do to go low, mid, high to start with. This pattern happens to be a descending high, mid, low, mid pattern. Okay, there's our first couple measures. There's some ideas for how you can practice those first couple measures. Before we move on to the next chunk, which is the introduction tag, the intro tag. In this piece, there's something special. There's a little tag on the intro and on the outro. All right, and this tag introduces a chromatic uh, lick, if you will, a little chromatic chunk. Um, one, two, three. It's not often that we play both two and three. And it should be noted that if you're playing both second and third finger on the same string, we're, we have to be playing a note from outside the key, outside of a major key, that is. But in this case, it's one, two, three, and those fingers all next to each other are half steps, so this is a little chromatic pattern. Chromatic just means half steps, half step to half step, okay? And when we're doing this position, we always talk about this as our chromatic position. One, two, three, four. So you can warm up for this chunk of chromatic music with just some one, two, three, four pattern. <laughs> If you can go from the bottom to the top, you can go from the top to the bottom. Alright, are you dizzy yet? Kind of sounds a little circusy, right? With all those half steps. Okay. The intro tag that we have here. You hear this a lot in a couple different styles of music. Maybe polka music, you've heard this before. Maybe in folk music, you've heard this before. Maybe in cartoon music, you've heard this before. Maybe in popular, popular music from the early 20th century, you've heard this. It shows up all the time. The uh, two tricky bits to it are the chromatic fingering, which I want you to practice separately. So let's go ahead and just do that a couple times. We'll do one, two, three, open. Just like it shows up in the music there. Rest and stop. Now let's repeat that a couple times. One, two, three, oh, stop and reset. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Stop and reset. Ready, go. Stop and reset. Ready, go. Stop and reset. Okay, now let's just loop one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Here we go. One, two, one, two, ready, go. So this, treat this as a way to sync up your mind and your body and coordinate the physical action. So in your mind you're thinking one, two, three, and you're hearing the sound and you're thinking the sound. Da, da, de, and then your fingers learn that when your brain is thinking this sound, that's the action they need to take. This is coordinating the movements. And of course there's the bow. Uh, where we need to really coordinate the bow is for the beginning of this pattern. Okay. 
That might be the trickiest part of the pattern, quite honestly. This is the beginning of measure three. Syncopations are very difficult with the bow. It's one of the hardest things, I think. Rhythm in general is difficult with the bow. When does your note start? It's very hard to tell. If we were in percussion, there, you know exactly when the note starts. But with the bow, it's a little tricky. It's soft rhythm. And so we need to try as hard as we can to, in a pattern like this with um, offbeat syncopation, to be as aggressive with our rhythm as we can, to really articulate, have a little bit of bite with your bow, okay? So the pattern I'm looking at, beginning of measure three, um, is happening with this eighth note to quarter note to eighth note syncopation pattern. It starts up bow. And honestly, you don't need to make the quarter note into the super, uh, you don't need to spend a lot of bow on that quarter note. Keep it kind of a slow, short amount of bow so you can keep that contained. That's a little uh, pro tip there. You can see I'm not using a ton of bow on that down bow quarter note. But I want the quarter note bow to sound like it's skating. It's off the beat. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, so it can't sound like an on beat note. This is a little bit of a tricky thing to talk about, but I should be able to hear the difference in, in a note that is an on beat note versus an off beat note. Let me try to give you an example. Those notes were on the beat. Same rhythm, same bowing pattern, but those notes were off the beat. Could you hear the difference? On the beat. Off the beat. Do you hear how the offbeat notes really pop? Ba, 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 ba. Okay, they need a lot of bite and they need energy. Offbeat notes have a lot of energy and they lead to the next beat. The onbeat notes are very grounded. Ba, 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 ba. It should feel like they're down here. Offbeat notes. Ba, ba, ba. Should be popping off. Okay? So now let's try up, down, up. And just kind of repeat this pattern. Up, down, up, rest, rest. Up, down, up, rest, rest. Like that. One, two, ready, go. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Okay, you could keep doing that as long as you need to. And with any of these exercises I introduced to you, change the tempo if you have to. If that's too fast to do, try it slowing it down. One of the awesome things about YouTube is you could go ahead and change the speed of this video. So, go back 10, 20 seconds, change the speed to half speed, change the speed to quarter speed, three quarter speed. And that can be already just an easy way to get the right tempo. If you need to slow it down just a little bit, go to 0.75x speed, play along, okay? And then it maybe is at the perfect tempo for you to work at. If that's still too fast to coordinate it, go to half tempo on the video. That's one of the easier ways for you to adjust the speed if you need to. Of course, you can always pause the video and get out your friend the metronome. I highly encourage working with the metronome. Put it on at a tempo and find that starting tempo where you can perform all the actions correctly and coordinate it. And then bump the tempo up from there. Now let's try to put um, ba -ba -da with da -da -de -ba. and I kind of like to do this open string ba -da -da. a little bit more like a half note. Da -da 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 -dum, ba -ba -dum. I know it's notated as a quarter note. That's just my personal preference. If you want to play what's on the page, go for it, but I'm going to do a half note. Okay? Here we go. Da -da 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 -de. Ba -ya. And land on that next downbeat. One, two, ready. Go. Okay? How'd you do?
Let's try it again. Little slower. Ba -bum, ba -bum, bum -bum. One, two, ready, go. Okay. You might want to make the downbeat note, uh, third finger, a little bit short. Just a little bit. And then, ba -yum is accentuated because you made the previous note a little bit short. We're arriving there. So no matter what, put a little accent or lean into that note. But making it a, a slightly bit shorter can help do that. Okay, that's it for this little intro tag. Um, you might notice that it starts on the fifth, goes up to the major seven, back to the fifth. So thinking about a popular tag like this on what chord tone does it start or what step of the key does it start on and categorize it in your mind like that. Put that in your Rolodex, if you even know what that is, of tags and cadences in your, your, your little folder in your mind where you store all, uh, save all of your tags and cadence files. That one starts on the fifth. Da 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 dee bum one. Okay, goes up to one. So here we go, let's do measure five. This is the beginning of our melody. Kind of medium tempo. Four, 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 oh, three, three, four, one, one, oh. Four, 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 oh, three, three, one, oh, oh, oh. For this, let's just do the first two measures of it. Okay, and we'll pause. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> There's our first little chunk. Practice that as much as you need to to coordinate it. Whatever tempo you need to do, rewind the video, play along, change the speed, stop the video, get out your metronome, and start working at whatever tempo you can coordinate the action at. All right, now, assuming that you've got that figured out, let's move on to the next two measures. One, two, ready, go. Okay, there we have it. Same process. If you need to pause the video, work on it a little bit, that's fine. Now let's play through that whole phrase. Let's do it twice because it has a repeat sign, okay? We're just practicing to get the fluidity up of the whole phrase. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> folk music you can change it a little bit to make it your style you can look for moments to put little ornaments in here's a good example we have we have this big leap from open to fourth why not fill in those notes with the with the steps of the key so you can practice slow and make sure you feel that fourth finger as a downbeat of the next measure and speed it up a little bit. Until eventually it just um, becomes a sound, really. And it launches you to the next downbeat. You can even add that chromatic second finger note, just like we have from the intro tag into that. And if you want to, you can um, even detach the open string. So instead of where it's all notes of the key, you could do and think about it from the open D string as one, two, three, four. That is more of a, a jazz ornament from saxophone players. Think uh, Coltrane, he does a lot of stuff like that. Okay, so whether you want to go from open string and play the notes of the key, 0134, which sounds like this, oops, okay, uh, or if you want to do it the chromatic way, kind of like Coltrane or a saxophone player kind of style, but it's still 
works here. We've already introduced the chromatic tag in the opening. It would sound like this. <laughs> So I'll play around with that, and if you don't like that, you can mess around and come up with your own little ornament to put there. Maybe you like to come from the top and come down. Anyway, just have fun with it. Now let's look at measure 9. Here we get to introduce maybe the funnest bit of this whole piece. Okay. So you can just sit there all day and practice your barms. For this one, I kind of flatten out my fingers into this shape, okay? And so instead of being on the tip of my finger, I'm kind of flattening it, and it gives it a fuzzy tone when you're on the pad like that. And I'm bracing um, one, two, and three together. So they're acting like a big fuzzy finger. And fourth finger is out for T, you know, like that, or... You know, um, we're going surfing, maybe. So, what you need to do is, you can start slow and slide into the note. Play around with when do you start the bow versus when do you start sliding the fingers. So, if you want to establish a longer... Um, delayed scoop, you could start the bow first and slide into the note. That's a kind of a slow, slow motion version. You can hear it, hopefully. Okay, so it stays on the lower pitch and then it scoops up. Or you can think about it as a faster scoop where it's more like a straight line. So I'm kind of I'm starting my slide a microsecond before I start the bow. There is no one exact way to do it. You can find your version. Maybe it's slightly in between. Maybe you like to slow down your slide as you get closer to the pitch. That's an option too. It's a scoop. So you have to find your voice. What's your version of the scoop? Bar. Okay, that's mine. We have other opportunities to place ornaments on the same pitch. So if we're coming back to that pitch and we've already ornamented it before, we could do the same one, or we could add a different spice to it, like a hammer-on. So in the next measure, I might go... from below and this is pretty percussive and fast and I treat it like a grace note so that three comes on the downbeat when three we just a tiny bit before the beat doing we slam our hammer on and in this case you can use two to support or you can just slam with third finger it partly depends on personal uh, preference as far as that technique goes. And uh, for the very end of this phrase, you might do a little slurpy slidey on first finger. So that's a pretty tough one to pull off, especially as the tempo gets faster, these slides are hard to do and you might end up doing more hammer-ons than slides. instead of separates. It's hard to do those separate, so you might do it as a slur. Let's play from nine and do the repeat on that little phrase. One, two, ready, go. slightly different version of the slurpy slidey first finger technique. 
Anyway, you just got to practice and try and experiment. And that's the fun part about doing tunes like this is you get to bring your own flavor to it. And that's encouraged. Here we are. We've made it to the final tag. Shave and haircut two bits. Okay. You've heard this on a thousand things. And in this case, we're starting on the root of the key. We're starting on one to the fifth. Um, do, so, so, la, so, ti, do. Okay, so save that in your file and your folder for ending tags. Shave and haircut two bits starts on do. It starts on one. All right, let's do it a little bit slow. One, da, da, di, da, boom, dun, dun. Okay, you have to have fun with this one. You can't play this boring, right? If you think it's boring, it's gonna sound boring. So you gotta have fun with it. And then the audience has fun with it too. Um, so I think it's okay to kind of uh, wink at them a little bit when you play it, because it's funny. All right, here we go. Let's try it a little faster. Deep, da, da, deep, da, ba, ba. One, two, ready, go. All right. Practice that as much as you need to, to get the fluidity up, have fun with it. Okay, so I have to jump in here. I spent so much time editing this video and listening to the shave and haircut two bits soundbite that I actually did get a shave and a haircut. So be careful how many times you practice this outro tag. It's powerful stuff. Also, shout out to my girlfriend, Anne, who gave me the shave and a haircut from home while we're in the middle of this global pandemic. All right, let's jump back into the video. Let's do one final run through of this piece and put it all together at a little bit faster tempo. From the top. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Oh, I gotta take the correct tempo. One, two, three, four. Repeat, um, the measure five will be A, uh, measure nine is B. So let's do A, repeat A, B, repeat B, and then do that again. A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B. All right, because it's a little too short otherwise. Let's try it. One, two, one, two, ready, go. One, two, two, ready, go. So I, I hope that you learned something new about the piece today. You had a good idea about how to practice it. 
And uh, most of all, have fun and happy practicing. Thank you.